It is 29 minutes past eight on this Monday morning. We are turning our attention to the Alliance League and we're starting with hurling this morning. Delighted to welcome Cyril Farrell back to the show. Good morning to you, Cyril. Morning, how are things? Not too bad at all. Uh, so there's been a lot of reaction to the first couple of weekends of hurling that we've seen. A lot of it has been negative. What's been your take on the fair of hurling that we've seen over the first two weeks of this year's league? Well, I suppose, again, often at the start of the league, the referees are very strict on those, and I suppose all the frees being given, like, now you have to have a, a really good free taker that will get 9 out of 10 or 10 out of 11 or that, because the, the free counts are going up. But, like, uh, yesterday, in the same time, I always said, oh, not to, con not to stop Limerick in the sense they play their own game. No sweepers, so it shoved up on the Limerick puck out and, like, uh, didn't want to get bullied. That was the big thing that kind of came out of that game for me and watching it close. Like, they were, they were making sure, like... Uh, physicality of Limerick is very, very strong, but this time Gaul went straight up and uh, the free count went Gaul with way, you know, which was kind of, you know, unusual for a change, but the definitely the free count for Gaul was way really higher than, you know, it was higher compared to Limerick. I think it was about was a 22-14 in the count, like, and when you're nailing the free, like, it gives you a great chance of winning. That seems to be the key metric in all of these games so far. If you're winning more frees than your opponent, you've got a good chance of winning a game. Yeah, well, you see, like, uh, Limerick's Limit style of play, like, is very physical. They're a very, very good team, a very physical team. But, like, for once, like, a, a team didn't go out to contain them. Gaul kind of faced them straight up. Whereas if you watch, the, say, the Chip Cork game on Saturday evening, Chip conceded all the puck-outs more or less to Cork. They were the short game, and Chip were trying to break them down. If he broke them down, and got a free to score. But other than that, they were kind of dependent on Cork's kind of short game to break down. Cork did some great hurling, and, you know, that's the kind of new style, I suppose, really, that kind of short game, working through the lines and, you know, having a pop pass and off the shoulder and getting moves in the run. But, like, again, the free take, and even though Jason Ford is an inactive free take for the other side last night or Saturday night, wasn't up to his usual high standards, even though he nailed the one near the end. But it, it showed, like, the free taking is very, very, getting more important than I suppose. Like the, 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 the legislature has to have a look at it because you don't want to have, just to have a free car, like just to have a free taker to win matches. You have, you'd want to have more kind of flow in the game. It's becoming too much, isn't it? Like it, it, as you say there, it, it is the deciding factor in all of these. Like what, what would you change or, or what would you do to ensure that it doesn't become too important the free taking? Well, I suppose you'd have to say like the joint the start of the league. You know the the, the, the rules are being enforced very 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 much. Like you'll always find as it goes on in the championship, it kind of eases down a bit. Like uh, you know, okay, the, the rule like about pulling down, but that's that's not where the, where all the the, the, the freeze or where all the talk is coming from. It's kind of coming from kind of say you know, kind of touching the physicality. They're taking that physical element out of it so far anyway. Now, we might come back into it and like, there's a big outcry about it. But, you know, uh, I suppose it's always there if, if you want to kind of follow the letter of the law. But, like, usually in Harlan, it's kind of let flow. And now that it's been stopped, you know, like, it's it's it's, it's, it's causing consternation. After saying that, I was had some great games. Like, Wick, or the player, Wickford came back from the day yesterday against Clare again. When Clare the man stood off, Wickford kind of good at the running game, walked the ball through the lines, and I think got about two goals in a minute or two, changed the whole complexion of the game. And their free taking wasn't good yesterday, which is like, you know, and, the, and, it was, and then to cap it all, uh, you know, Connor got a, 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 a free out at a nearly impossible angle and scored it after all that, you know, after all this, after a missing freeze, you know, so it was, it was unusual, really. Can I just uh, talk about a little bit about this? Because um, I was reading Eamon Donoghue's piece in the Irish Times before the All Ireland hurling final last year, and he was talking about the free count that Limerick have been racking up big numbers of frees, but they tended to be quite far from goal. So I, I'm not saying that it was um, a, a tactic or anything, but that they felt safe giving away frees far from goal. I don't know. Are we getting to the point where you you don't want teams to be tactically fouling in the full back line? Or, well, you or see, yeah, kind of yeah well, what, what you say is true, but most teams playing Limerick up to this didn't play with six forwards. They played usually with a sweeper to contain, to stop Limerick and kind of go back, kind of to kind of defend, to stop them from kind of put, from them walking the ball through the lines. Yesterday, the big change was in the tactics that Gaul played their own game. They didn't actually go out, you know, they, they set up with, with six at the back, two midfield, six forwards, which is very unusual, unusual in the modern game because usually they're kind of, you know, playing very defensive and kind of walking through the lines. And they, they, they kind of changed, they had a long ball and the short ball, but they set up kind of to suit themselves and to kind of meet um, Limerick's physicality head on. Now, the free count in Causeway, another day it could go the other way. John Kiley after the match was very upset about it, but that, that's, that can happen as it was really. Like, but it's early in the championship, and I expect Limerick next Sunday to bounce back with a big, with a big display. They're missing a few top players, and they're still very good. They're only kind of getting, you know, they're, they're, they're like a giant just kind of ambling along so far. Their big thing is to retain 
like to retain the All Ireland, and the, the game in Pierce Stadium would be forgotten about. Which would probably teach him a lesson, and like he's he's finding out like that. Some of the young players they brought on are good hurlers, but they're not ready for the they're not ready for the real fray yet. Like they're only still very young, you know. Are Galway the second best team in the country at the moment? Yeah, like look, at, you know, all they said and done, like Galway oh, and very close last year, and uh, okay, they might deserve to win, but like. Uh, Cahill Mannion was gone off injured and Joe Cannon that's going to happen they were going off injured and these are two talismans for, for goal like Mannion is playing over his skin Joe Cannon looks fantastic shape like looks in great shape and got some great scores he's a great hurler these guys have gone any team that, that's not saying that beat them with like it, it, it promised to be a great summer because like Cork are coming with, with their style of play walking the fast book out going through the lines like you know and Tip like seem to be kind of still relying on the on the older players still very hard to beat like you know and Watford last yesterday but with all the, the with like all the panel and nearly got caught for Westmead at the great game. So like things will begin to, to shape up. Wexford's hard to be player. Player will be very disappointed just because the performance was quite good, even though they were beaten. Now they have to win the next day out, but like uh, uh you know, Wexford will be very happy to have four points out of two games. And I suppose the team so far of of, of say of the of the league so far has to be Antrim. I know they'll beat just by Kilkenny. It's, it's a hard act to go down to Northern Park and win there. But Antrim have been kind of refreshing, really. Like, you know, and uh, I'd say Matthew Kinney over Dublin would be kind of watching close to Antrim in the league to, because they, they're playing them in the championship and that's not a foreground game between Dublin and, and Antrim by any means. No, absolutely not. They've, they've really been the story of the first two weeks. Just to, to go back just one last time to Limerick against Galway, Cyril, I just wanted to ask you about John Kiley's comments after the game. He's obviously been one of the, the main voices disagreeing with some of the new rules that have been brought into hurling but he was also talking about Galway and he said that when a player has the ball and they run at you and throw themselves on the ground and they're roaring and shouting that's embarrassing that's not part of the game he called it simulation some clear examples a couple were very embarrassing none of us want to see that brought in as part of our game was that what Galway were at yesterday Cyril was it was it a lot of simulation from them well he must have saw it that way I was I, I didn't see it that way you know they you know, uh, uh, Limerick are no, no soft touches, like, uh, you know, like, uh, they're, they're a good, strong, physical side and good hurlers, like, but so are Galway. And, like, after last year, the feeling in Galway would be that they were bullied in Crow Park, you know, that the, that the felt they were bullied. For example, Joe Cannon got a good hard tackle, uh, went down, I don't know, was a free given, no Galway lad even complain to the ref or tackle the Limerick lad. That was felt around the county that these lads, you know, it's about time stood up. And I think yesterday they did stand up like and kind of have, have, kind of face to face up. And that was always going to happen. Like uh, this year after what happened to Galway last year. That that was the feeling. Whether it was or not, that that was the feeling in the county. And people were saying it's about time we stood up to these guys because they are big and strong. So you have to be forced to force. Like you can't just divide them. So, you know, uh, John Kiley, he, he's, he's forewarned now and since Galway oh, have probably done limits a great favour because like, we're kind of cruising the, the last day against Tipperary out like it didn't seem that they did that they minded to get beaten and yet when Tip got in front about all the big ones that they wanted to hold the record of not, not losing the game and it would probably be a relief that you know that they kind of picked themselves up again and, and they will you know there's no doubt about that like I think I think it's a great warning to John Kiley that what, what can happen on, on a given day but like Galway oh, are one of the few teams around that would have a lot of talent and they have a lot of physical strength the same as as Limerick. Mm. I'd say describing an opponent as diving in hurling is one of the the, 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 the terrible things you can say about an opponent. It, it kind of questions, I don't know, the, the integrity of your, of your opponent and and uh, and things like that. Yeah, well, go wouldn't like that, and no, I'll tell you that, because these guys, like, they'd be very honest players and they'd be good players. Like, you know, they've won all Ireland and lost them. They've been around the block a lot, of all the guys, young lads getting, you know, like, uh, you know, <laughs> there's a couple of young lads there coming on and fighting for the positions that, you know, I, I don't know, maybe one one occasion that I got tripped, but other than that, like, uh, I was surprised, really, because, like, Limerick are a good physical team, like, and, <laughs> like, you have to, like, when you live by the sword, you have to die by the sword. It's only a league game, you know, so he's probably trying to get the message across that Limerick are being penalised so much for being physical. They do live on the edge, they hurl on the edge, and last year didn't count, kind of like, you know, these, these three aren't going against them. This time they are, so... Like they'll have to kind of, they will have to curtail their tackling. There's no doubt about that because like they're giving these frees away. Like, like tip tip against them lived on frees and and drew the match. Uh, and they hardly got a score from player for a long time. Tip didn't, but yet they were quite content to pull out the full forward line, let let Limerick have the ball and uh, kind of contain and, and wait for a mistake and kind of punish a free. That's 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 what Tip did against them. And you know, like, but I think Limerick will learn. And they'll they'll just kind of curtail the tackling a little bit, and you know, God, you know, in the championship, I think it's God help them because they're still a great team. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, when it comes to Cork then, Cyril, they seem to be another county who've realised that adding a bit of grit to their game, especially in defence, is, is what's required for them to, to finally step up and contend for an All-Ireland. Is that what you've seen over the first couple of weeks, that this is a team oh, yeah. that isn't going to die so easily? Yeah, like, look, they're lovely hurlers. They always have been lovely hurlers, and, and they're, they're very, very good hurlers. But now, like, again, it's the kind of the modern game. A lot of people won't like it. You know, a lot of people be saying, good God almighty. I had three phone calls that's when people said, is this, is this the modern game from Saturday night? You know, the, the kind of the sharp puck out, sweeping through the lines. Now, you see, Tip conceded the puck out, so it was easy for the puck to chart, because they're going to win it and, 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 you know, kind of work it through the lines and pop off the shoulder and kind of walk the ball into the net area. But now, that's an arsenal the set, and they are very, very good hurlers. But, like, their defence has tightened up, and you'd expect not to let it go, but, like, with, with the rock and roll of Grady in there, like, that, that would be their, their, their masterpiece, like, and they have very, very good players. Now, if, if you give Cork room to dance, they will dance. You know what I mean? But after saying all that, they got two very good goals against uh, against Tipperary and Sydney drew the match. So, like, there will be kind of questions about themselves again when they come up against kind of a team that won't let them have the, that with, with challenge on the puck out. You know what I mean? That will, that will show up on the puck out. So, in other words, you have to win your own ball, which which to them now will be hard enough to do. But they are lovely hurlers. Like, and Young Coleman sits the back and saying, oh, he's skinny, you know. These guys up front are lovely. And Young Connery there, so I'm playing with him in one year or two, but he came on. These guys are good hurlers. Like, they have the hurlers ability. Now, when they meet Limerick in the championship, they're going to have to be able to stand up to the physicality of Limerick as well because, like, you know, Limerick has fellas that are to take tackles, cut through them, and, uh, you know, and, and use their strength legally. So, it's, it's going to be a great summer. It's, it's hotting up already. And I suppose you'd have to say as well, the hurlers are rookies. <laughs> <laughs> the second chance, whereas the poor footballers, well, if you have a poor day at the office and get caught with a late goal, you're gone for the years. It's tough on them, like. Sir, I wanted to ask you about the experience in the backroom team of Cork. It kind of, uh, I was comparing it to the supergroup, the Travelling Wilburys, yesterday. They've got <laughs> players and management from every generation going back to the early 80s involved with the team. Just how important is that going to be, do you think? Well, you see, Cork are very traditional and proud county and they haven't been winning and they're probably not used to not winning like you know so they put everything like they're leaving no stone in turn they're not afraid to ask the young and the old out to help and typical Cork like everyone gets behind the team and if they get on your knees you know if they get on a run they'll, they'll be very like they have they have a great role in the village and great tradition now the likes of say Donald O'Grady who had no well in the rock of these guys and jerk putting them like you know they're they're real hurling men like, I've learned the trade, playing the game with colleges, the whole lot, like, kind of, we call it the modern game. That's that's what they're trying to play now, because it kind of suits their holders. They're able to play kind of lovely flick hurling off the shoulder, and and they, have the, they are using the pace. Now, where they're going to run into trouble is they'll say they have to fight for the puck out, and when they're hit with tackles, hard, like, you know, when, the, when these lovely passes are coming. In other words, to stop the run. That's that's what they're going to have. But, like, if they get, if they get it run in the championship, they could come overnight. Now, we're saying that for a good while because it's a good while since Carpool and all Ireland. But they are a very exciting team to look at and, and they're, they're... But to me now, the, the first match against Limerick was, is going to be something else because you're, you're talking about a kind of a running shot off the shoulder team against a team more or less the same, like Limerick the same, but a lot more physical and have that experience of winning. And like when you, when you put out all the Limerick, when you get the whole team out together and the move well, they're still very hard to stop. They're scoring goals this year. That's the kind of difference between previous seasons where, you know, in, the, in that tip game at the weekend, they might have lost that a couple of years ago or last year. Yeah, well, yeah, well they, are going for the, they are going for the juggler because they have the pace. When the, when the point is on, they're not taking, they're going the next year, drawing the man and walking, the ha walking kind of, you know, the hand pass off the shoulder. It's like a football thing, really, lots of the Horland crowd, the older generation, the, like the, the ones the winners, winner, they're going to hit the, hit the ball, even, you know, like hit a long ball. And it's all about kind of position, though, but they are good at it and they have the pace to exploit it. And what's very nice uh, against the uh, against tip balls, even the subs of Brahan, like the guys who kind of maybe get a bit tired up front, the subs of Brahan were, were, were very, very effective. So they are getting a room into their panel and they're going to have about 20 players that they can use in the championship, which you need where the modern day is going, especially like, you know, with all the with, with the running game that they have. But when they meet the championship where they're going to get a hard tackle when they're making that run, that's, that's, when, that's, when, they're, that's when you really see what they're made of. You mentioned that tactical point in Cork Tip, the surrendering of the opposition puck out. Like, I think... Maybe in big football games, teams have reached a point where doing that maybe isn't wise. Do you think hurling is going to eventually develop that way where surrendering the puck out just doesn't yeah, make well, sense? Yeah, Tipperary have played two games now against Limerick and against Cork and they've more or less uh, surrendered the puck out and then, you know, kind of broke it down out the field and, and then the we call them turnovers. 
Mm. And, uh, you know, like Galway, say last year, played a sweeper against Limerick, but it was very noticeable yesterday that they faced it straight up and every puck out was contested and uh, under the high ball. Now, Limerick are good under the high ball. It was very noticeable when Galway puck out and Bruno just go down on top of Joseph Cooney uh, wing forward. Now, he's a big a big unit and he was under pressure on the high ball, but ball, they didn't mind. Galway seemed they didn't mind not getting the high ball. Once they were getting ready for the break of the ball. They seemed to have that walked out like big, big unit again, something like, uh, you know, Gareth Hegarty, big and strong and forceful. And uh, that's that's you know that's the like, kind of the outlet that they have on the long ball. Short ball is lovely, you know, if if the if the if the opposition give it to you. But like you know, even against against Clare yesterday, you know, we have a quid in playing and goals for Clare and playing well. But like when the puck out goes wrong and the opposition get the ball bang over the bar, you know, it looks that's when it when it breaks down it looks terrible. So but you have to live by it if you're going to run it like Cork are, are sticking to it, I'd say, and they're going to stick to it. So it'd be interesting to see how the how the game goes on, like and uh, you know they have they have the players. Limerick are still ahead of the party and the rest are chasing. But like Galway kind of showed how to beat Limerick and kind of at least give others a glimmer of hope because for a while there, they were unbeatable. Like, but it's very hard to stay unbeatable. I think in the long run, it'll do John Kiley a lot of good actually to get beaten and just kind of well, maybe say start again, but they're, they're still the champions. Yeah, and then on, on, on the general thing, hopefully you're right as well about the, the free count diminishing as the as the weeks go by. Hopefully uh, referees I, I are... See, I, think, I think it will. That, that, yeah. that has, that's gone down to the history of the you know, the GA, like the start of the league. Like, you know, you, 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 you'll see championship hurling where, you know, it'll be it'll be still kind of physical and, you know, tundra stuff, which which we kind of need in hurling. We don't need it to be like a tennis match, being bong, ping bong, free here, free there. Like, we don't need that. We need the flow. And the sooner to get back to that, the better. Yeah, well, fingers crossed it actually turns out that way. J just very briefly before we wrap, Cyril, are you concerned about Clare at all? Obviously, Antrim last weekend and that, that collapse yesterday uh, with all the off-the-field off sagas that, that occurred over the course of the winter. It's impossible to separate those two things. It's only the league, but it hasn't been a good start to the league. No, it hasn't, but it's, it's important that the lads over team concentrate on the team. Like, they still have a good team. Like, now, yesterday, to be fair, Tony Kelly went off. You're mm. missing Shane O'Donnell, you're missing David Reed, you're missing these kind of good lads, you know, that would be on the team. Now, they still played very well, and for most of the game, they were well on top. But in that, like, you have to realise that, that the Wexford free taken was, was an off day. You know what I mean? They should never have been that far behind. But they were, and Clare were quite happy. And if you were listening to the car, like, counter group, they were kind of cruising, you know what I mean? Or seemed to be cruising the whole time. And the next thing they were hit with these goals. But, like, the modern day, like, the likes of Simon Dunne, who got a fantastic goal, who's playing cornerback, is like number four in your back or number two. That doesn't matter anymore. You have to be able to travel. And, like, Wexford are playing the kind of the short game, travelling with the ball, going forward and playing it across the pitch, working up together. And again, when it works, it looks lovely. When it breaks down, of course, they're all roared. Right? There's no one there to roar to me, but everyone is kind of upset at them. But like that's that's Davy's game, and he's not going to he's not going to change. Like Kevin Foley will be back there. He mightn't like the word three people with caught whichever like an extra defender. He's protecting the back then and they'll attack and draw as they did as yesterday. And like on song, they're a hard team to beat. Be interested to see themselves in Kilkenny win the meet again, like because again they're they're two very physical teams. Cyril Farrell, great to have you with us this morning. Thanks a million. Well, pleasure is mine.